All right, guys. Um, so chapter 25 and 26, I, they're together here, but I'm probably going to have to switch them into two. The very first thing you need to do before going any further is to click this link. Um, there's some acronyms. Um, a guy has put together a really nice, YouTube video of how to remember different things with um, NSAIDs and anti-inflammatory drugs. It's important that you watch that first um, so that way you can understand better and I'm not going to repeat a lot of it because it's learning that you need to um, kind of have before we go into the lecture portion of this. So be sure you watch that and then continue. So what we're going to be talking about primarily here are the medications that help with inflammation. Um, NSAIDs, non-steroidal, uh, anti-inflammatory agents, uh, we use quite often for a lot of different things. So here's your list right here. Again, a lot of stuff that you can read on your own. Um, I put it all in here so I don't have to read it uh, to you. But you obviously see here at the bottom your cardinal signs of inflammation. Um, a lot of them you'll notice go hand in hand with infection. So a lot of times when we see inflammation, we also are suspect of infection of some kind. Um, it is not the same, but they can go hand in hand. So um, though you want to always keep that in mind, I may see inflammation and it's not infection, but I'm going to be checking for other signs of infection as well. So this just kind of goes into the breakdown. What I want you guys to focus on here is down here, okay? We're going to talk about this, these COX enzymes, all right? So the enzyme has two forms, COX-1, which protects stomach lining, and COX-2, which triggers inflammation and pain. Um, so we want, to, we want to stick with COX-1 protects the stomach lining, COX-2 triggers inflammation response, okay? This is going to help when we do NSAIDs and then help give you an understanding as to why there's a lot of people out there that can't take NSAIDs and it's primarily because of the whole, it's not, it's not selective. It doesn't decide COX-1 versus COX-2. It, it, it prevents both, um, but that COX-1, because of the protective protection of the stomach lining, um, when we make it so that's no longer functioning, then we can cause problems for people with gastric issues. So that's why so many people will say, I can't take NSAIDs. So again, your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, we're also going to look at corticosteroids. Um, I've listed other drugs in here as well. I'm not going to, they're there for your information. I'm going to tell you what ones you're going to need to definitely have drug cards for um, and which ones you can, you know, you're going to need drug cards for everything, uh, but ones that you may not need as soon as others. Again, we're going to go with the ones we're going to be working with, okay? So these NSAIDs, they're going to produce uh, analgesic effect, so a pain relief, um, antipyretic effect, which is lower a fever. Um, they can inhibit platelet aggregation. Uh, so their action is they're going to inhibit the COX enzymes. They're not specific, um, so it inhibits both. Um, the uses are to reduce inflammation and pain. Um, you will see that most of them are not recommended for fever headaches except for aspirin or ibuprofen. Both of those do work for fevers. Um, again, though, NSAIDs are basically being used to decrease inflammation. So you have first generation NSAIDs. Again, all of these are nonspecific. Uh, when you do your drug cards under classification, I would still list all of these guys under first generation NSAIDs with a little parenthesis underneath if they're very specific otherwise um, for like salicylates, which would be, um, but if you go through the rest, you can always put those on the back of the card in parenthesis and then we do have a second generation NSAID, which is just a COX-2 inhibitor. Um, so aspirin is going to be a huge one. You're going to definitely want to get this one done. I would do this one separately um, as a salicylate, um, anti-inflammatory, anti-platelet, and anti-paretic effects. Um, you got, you know, you got your different ranges here with your levels, um, different drugs, labs. Um, remember, when somebody's having a heart attack, we recommend aspirin um, because of its anti-platelet. We will also discuss this med when we go into antiplatelets. 
Um, you want to make sure that the patient does not take with other NSAIDs. Again, if you're taking multiple NSAIDs, think of what's happening, especially with the COX-1, where the stomach lining is totally unprotected. Um, you can read through that. And then we do not give aspirin with, to children um, with flu or virus symptoms because it causes what is called RISE syndrome. Um, if you are unaware of RISE syndrome, make sure that you look that up. I've got your side effects listed there. Um, some other things that you'll see down here, you got severe poisoning, um, yeah, your pharmacokinetics, your pharmacodynamics, um, your onset's 30 minutes, peaks within one to two hours, duration's four to six hours. So uh, when you see docs prescribing different things, um, you can look at that duration to see how long it's going to last and then know how often that order might be um, given for your patient. So these next kind of groups of NSAIDs, um, you know, the, the video talked about Indocin. Um, these, this group right here can cause sodium water retention and increase blood pressure. So there's going to be certain patients that I obviously would not want to use those with, right? My hypertensive patients, uh, my patients that are already retaining fluids, such as my CHF patients, uh, there's going to be those things. These different ones, though, you can hold off. I mean, they need to be done, but as far as testing purposes this week, you can hold off on all of these. Aspirin needs to be done, though, okay? Um, and then you can come back for this. Also, you're obviously, your Motrin and your Advil, as well as your Naproxen, these are medications you're going to see an awful lot uh, in the hospital. If you refer to page 343, chart 252 has a um, good breakdown of these different medications uh, to make your drug cards on those. Um, again, they're not selective, so they're, they're going to inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2. Um, being COX-1, once again, that is the protective enzyme for the stomach lining, and COX-2 being the inflammation process, so I'm blocking those. So if I'm not, the inflammation doesn't happen, but I also don't have the um, protective enzymes for my stomach. So increased bleeding can be an issue. Um, with warfarin and other medications your side effects look at there's gastric distress makes sense right because cox1 is inhibited uh, you have some other side effects in there um, other information for you that's listed right there again that you can read um, i'm going to kind of go through this phenomates you can you can do this um, i mean not for not for testing for this week but you are going to end up needing these things um, and we will eventually have some kind of um, session together where we go through this for with questions as well um, to go further into those when you need them but these will be ones that you'll either when you work with them in the hospital you'll make your drug cards or you will uh, um, you know do them on your own at another time so um, there is the COX-2 inhibitors so this one's going to skip the um, COX-1 so the stomach could still be um, protected because I'm not inhibiting that one However, you will notice, um, I actually don't see this used very often. Your side effects still include the GI di um, distress, and then the NSAIDs in older adults, this is all greater incidence of GI distress and ulceration, reduced de dose decreases risk of side effects. That's with a lot of things. Um, again, though, we don't see this used all that often. So here, under cor corticosteroids, you want to click this link and go watch this video. Now, it, about three to four minutes in, you might start feeling a little bit confused, but I promise he ends up bringing it all together and it makes sense. It gives you the general concept of corticosteroids so you can understand what's happening at, in the cell and why they do what they do, okay? Because, yes, it's a great way for controlling inflammation. It suppresses it both inside the cell and it also will block um, the, the, the COX and hip, or, um, enzymes. So the as far as inflammation, it definitely takes that away, but it also is gonna cause immunosuppression, okay? And it talks about what happens with that in the long term. It is so much, it's just such a good way to go learn this. So I totally recommend that you need to go watch that link um, before doing the drug cards. It will help you so much, um, and this is, Obviously, normally steroids, that's what corticosteroids, so you see prednisone, which is one of our number ones that we use, um, are not met. They're usually like a five to ten days 
paper and then get people off of them. We try really hard not to keep people on steroids for a long period of time. So when you do that, you do definitely want to make yourself a drug card um, starting with prednisone for corticosteroids, okay? Um, this is just for your information in here. Um, again, page or table 25.3, page 345 um, could be useful for you guys. Um, immunosuppressive agents, they're listed here for you, not on this test, but eventually you're going to come around to these. Um, a lot of times they use this for refractory rheumatoid arthritis um, that doesn't respond to anti-inflammatory drugs, but given in low doses, um, and it also can suppress cancer growth. So um, big heavy duty drugs, and we're going to try to steer clear from unless they're absolutely needed. Um, here you go, you've got another list of things that you can just read on your own when you're doing your reading. I'm not asking this stuff for your test. Um, Anti-malarials, so sometimes also used for arthritis. Um, it's going to suppress, um, it's going to help with the suppression of that, but it's not totally clear what, what, what the mechanism is of action in this. Um, and then we also can use this in a combination with NSAIDs for patients with arthritis that's not under control, okay? So obviously we want to try to use NSAIDs first, um, and then if for things that won't work, we can use um, other drugs for that. Um, gout is also in this chapter, which we will end up talking about um, later on in MedSurge 1. So I won't ask you the gout medications, but these will be important to make drug cards within a week or two before you go to clinical anyway, because you definitely will be taking care of patients with gout, and your clinical instructors will likely be asking you things. Um, be sure that in your books you read up on the, the dietary teachings for patients with gout. So then you have um, your colchiline. I know that's totally wrong. Anyway, this is the main medication that I've seen given to patients for anti-gout. Um, your big side effect is, effects is GI distress with that. And remember we were talking about in class the other day um, that when you list GI distress or upset, many times that can be a number of things, diarrhea, um, constipation, upset stomach, nausea, vomiting. Um, so if you know what those things are, you can just list your GI distress or GI upset. Um, you have contraindications with patients. So, and I also see allopurinol quite a bit for patients with gout as well. Um, again, you wanna make sure that you advise your patient to avoid alcohol. That's with all gout, but also with this medication. Um, beer actually can trigger um, gout reactions. Uh, but many of our medications are like that. Again, I don't need to read the slide to you. You can read it for yourself. Um, extra information was put on these, so I wouldn't have to talk as much on here and kind of direct you where you need to go. Um, but this stuff will not be on the test for Thursday, but you are going to need to know it. So you can't just skip over it and not do this stuff. You have to still do it and read through these things. Um, make sure you read it and correlate it in your book because it will come around for you and you will need to know this stuff because just because it's not on today's test doesn't mean or on Thursday's test doesn't mean you're not responsible for the material okay so I'm going to need to stop right here to go to the next um, for chapter 26 and upload this and then I will um, submit your next one after 26 is recorded